afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what a joyous occasion to be here. My name is Winston. Um, I've been I have been the uh, biotech industry for almost a decade. Uh, today, thank you, Ted, for uh, allowing me here to be here to share my thoughts and my findings of the importance of early detection through screening. When I was doing my uh, PhD in uh, 2006 at Imperial College London, my mom was diagnosed with late stage gastric cancer. Very sadly, she passed away six months later. She did her health check every year, and the question of why she was diagnosed in such a late stage and how we can improve diagnostic has been hunting me and um, traumatizing me, um, tormenting me uh, for years. So today, uh, I would like to use an example, infectious disease, where we encounter every day to unfold my findings. So how do we diagnose infectious diseases? Well, currently, there's three widely used methods. Culture, immunoassay, and molecular. Um, this is my first TED talk. I don't want to bore you, so I won't go into the exact science. I will use the simple analogies to illustrate the pro, pro, uh, pros and cons of, three methods, of these three methods. So, um, imagine there's a pond with fish. And the fish in the pond represents our body. Imagine there's sharks that represents the infectious diseases. So how do we know there's sharks in the pond? By using the first method, the culture method, we observe and we wait. We take a sample water from the pond, put it in a tank, and then we slowly watch, observe. If the fish die, maybe there's sharks. If we waited long enough, and they're so bored, and they start to mate, and we see baby sharks, and then, well, we can confirm there's sharks. But as you can see, this method is good, but it takes time, and time is a luxury. We need to take action quickly when we, we know there's sharks in the pond. Um, sorry. The second method <coughs> is the immunoassay method. Um, to, be, to be frank and to be direct, the method is to use an indirect way to detect um, sharks in the pond. So let's assume there's the fish, when they see the sharks, they're so nervous, they're so frightened, they poop, right? So we take, again, we take a sample of water and we just observe and see if there's poops. Sounds like a great method, method right? But what if, if there's sharks in the pond but the fish, they don't see them? They don't see the sharks, they're not frightened, they don't poop, right? Or the slow reaction of the fish, they poop maybe a few days later or weeks later. Right, so that's what we call the window period. So it's probably a good method, but not the best method. Last but not least, the molecular diagnostic method, where we directly detect the DNA of sharks in the pond. So that seems to be a great method because we directly see if there's sharks and we can ID what kind of sharks in the pond. But here comes the problem. I think you might ask me, so if molecular method is so great, why we still have the other two methods? Well, the simple answer is that the molecular method is, the turnaround time is long and it's too costly. So in current practice, the molecular method, we, we have to do the molecular method in the labs. And labs meaning building a lab, buying equipment, training technicians, and also you have to send the samples to a lab. That's all cost. 
And because they want to lower the cost, they do the test, they run the test in batches. Currently, they run 96 tests per batch. So you have to wait for all the sample comes in. So that's why when you, we send a test to a lab, it takes days or weeks to come back. But the good news is we, as a scientist, we try to resolve that problem. We try to bring molecular tests, which is the golden standard in the laboratory, um, to POC, to point of care. What is point of care? I'll give you some examples here. Uh, I think everyone is familiar with a point of care test called pregnancy test. I think a lot of ladies and guys know here. Um, and another one is the immunoassay influenza test. And people with uh, diabetes, um, uh, they know this is a glucose test they use at home. So what, what, is, what is point of care test? So I, I'll, I'll point out some, some key, key points here. Um, you don't need a lab. You shouldn't need a lab. Um, you should get immediate results. I would say within 30 minutes. It has to be affordable, which is very important. If, you, if it's not affordable, you cannot deploy everywhere, nationwide, right? And, and also, very importantly, it has to be very easy to use. You should be able to train someone to use this test uh, within 30 minutes. So, what is the value, value proposition here? The laboratory test is great. You know, it's the, on the, uh, at the upper right-hand corner. It's very high accuracy, but the problem is it's not affordable. It's really, really expensive. The rapid immunoassay test is great because it's very affordable, but, you know, remember the poop? It, it's not so sensitive. That's the problem. There's what we want. At the, at the bottom right-hand corner is what we want. We want a point-of-care molecular test. So here, I would, I would like to use an example to illustrate why POC molecular test is very, very important. According to the, the WHO, um, influenza, we encounter every day. Now it's the influenza, influenza season. Half a million people die in the world because of influenza complications. But you will tell me, well, well, that's that whole world, right? I mean, probably the developing countries because they don't have good healthcare, they don't have good healthcare system, they don't have good te good good tests. That's why so many people, um, the mortality rate is so high. But look, let's let's look at the CDC numbers. This is uh, 2018, 80,000, almost 80,000 people die of flu complications. That's a lot because according to um, the Breast Cancer Association, 40,000 people die of breast cancer at the same year. So it's really awkward when, when influenza, you have vaccines, you have diagnostic tools, and you also have drugs, but the mortality rate is still so high. I think this is the problem. This is one of the major problems because immunoassay tests cannot detect poop um, quick enough. So let me explain further. It's very important that antiviral drugs only works within the 40 hours of flu-like symptoms. But the problem is the rapid, flu, uh, the rapid influenza test, we call IDT, according to studies, can only detect flu after 48 hours. That's the dilemma. If you want to use a very accurate test, a lab test, you have to send it to the labs. And when you send it to the labs, the result comes back, it's a few days or weeks. You're either cured or you're dead. Last but not least, it's from the CDC data, the influenza RIDT immune assay test, the sensitivity is only 50 to 70 percent. That's like flipping a coin. That's why many countries like Australia and Europe, 
they don't even bother to use it. So let me give you a, some backgrounds of um, the flu. Um, unfortunately, uh, the casualty of flu affects the most vulnerable groups in our society. Children, elderly, chronic disease patients, and pregnant women. It's very sad. And U.S. alone, there's a billion visits to the hospital due to flu-like symptoms. That's a lot of people. A lot of visits, I would say, yeah. So what's, why is POC molecular test effective? According to studies, it reduced um, antibiotic therapy durations. Uh, it, it reduced the ICU patients in the ICU. Um, it decreased the mortality if you get the result within seven hours. Better bed, bed patient bed management. And most importantly, it lowers costs. According to an article, um, a study done by NHS, if we can implement 20 minutes flu tests, we can save 24 million pounds each year. And also, just come, came out recently, the Infectious Disease Society of America recommend conditions should use rapid molecular assay over immunoassay flu tests for outpatients. So, Let's look at this again. So we, I think we all get it here. We want a point of care molecular test where the performance is high. We have very quick turnaround within 30 minutes. We want it to be very affordable, the bottom right hand corner, and be very accurate. This is a very sad story. It's one of the, you know, this little young boy here is called Joseph. She's, he was five when he passed away because of uh, H1N1 2009. His mother is working with CDC to fight influenza. This is one of many, many cases, very sad cases, tragedy to a family. And I think if we can implement POC molecular tests, we can prevent this from happening. So to summarize, what are the key findings? There's three key findings first. Decentralization. What do I mean by that? <clears throat> Not only the healthcare industry, but in the smartphone industry as well. Um, I think my father's here uh, in the past, when he needs to make a call, he has to go through the operator. Uh, now then, in our, my era, we, we go use the home phone. Then when we're high school, then we have smartphones or cell phones. And now I think every one of you has, you know, we have smartphones. So decentralized, liberalized freedom of communication. Food, right? Refrigeration. I mean, in the past, you have to go to a lake, dig up ice, send it to home to refrigerate your food. Then they, you have the uh, um, ice factories to send ice cube to your house. Now everyone, every household has a refrigerator. Um, cryptocurrency. Uh, something happening now, blockchain, decentralizing um, currency, liberating currency to, to, to the mass, to the masses. And of course, um, in the medical field, I believe that the molecular test will be the trend to, uh, to be liberalized. And every one of you should be able to get your healthcare information um, on the spot. The second um, key finding is precision medicine and telemedicine. I'll go through, go through this quickly. Um, I think all the experts have uh, been warning us uh, a, a pandemic is coming, it's prone to come. So I think we, are, we should be ready, we should build a system that it will take care of everyone here in the, in, in the community, we should have very good diagnostic tools that will warn the public health that what's going on. So I think this is very important. And last but not least, 
the wild goose chase. What, what is wild goose chase? You know, I have been in industry for many years, uh, and I've been talking to VCs, um, angels, and governments. Everyone wants to find cures. Wants to find cures for cancer, wants to find cures, vaccines for HIV. But that's long-term plan. I, I think those are very good, but that's long-term plan. We all run companies here. I run a company. If we always just plan for the long-term, I think the company will collapse really, really fast. So I think we should make effort to focus on the short terms as well and deploying good di diagnostic kits, molecular tests, is a short-term way to save lives. We can prevent TB, drug resistance TB. We can prevent antibody resi resistance, sepsis, 200 and 70,000 people die every year. Pneumonia, a million people die every year. This is a tragedy that we can prevent. So last but not least, I think I'm very happy to be here, to be able to share the knowledge. And we should be able to prevent Joseph and all these little young children, prevent them, prevent preventable tragedies from happening. Thank you very much.